Welcome to the Belmont Pen Pick 4. It's the seventh and final week. I'm Josh Brown and Chad Dale is sitting next to me and we will go over this final week for the Pick 4. Chad recapping last week's uh, Pick 4 quickly. Your $8 play returned a $33.50 return. My $24 play, if you bet it earlier enough, with the uh, scratches returned $134. So with cheap tickets, we both took down the early Pick 4. That's correct. I wish we would have returned a little bit, but they're all favorites. They were. We have three favorites and then a second choice. So we'll see this week. I think it's going to be a little tricky, as you said earlier off camera. We'll see what's going to go on. But before we dive into the pick four for this seventh and final week, Chad's going to go over a couple of reminders. The first one will be the special racing festival on Wednesday, November the 27th. That is correct. Thanksgiving Eve, night before Thanksgiving, we have a racing festival here at Penn National Racecourse, Wednesday, November 27th. We have an all stakes early pick four, which will feature the quarter million dollar fabulous strike handicap. Then we also have a $150,000 lady and waiting stakes. We also have a $150,000 Swatera stakes and a $75,000 Blue Mountain Pennsylvania bread fraternity. That night, we also have a food for friends food drive from 5 p.m. to 8 p.m. Support your racetrack Pepsi food bank. Bring a non-perishable food item and receive a free mystery uh, wagering voucher, values between $2 and $100, one per guest, just remember that. And the donation drop-off is on the second floor next to the program stand, in between Mountain View uh, Dining and the Skybox Sports Bar. And that's Wednesday, November 27th, our second biggest day of the year here at Penn National. So Chad's gonna go over part two of this, and this is going to be how to properly wager our Belmont Penn Pick 4. Once again, that's the Belmont Penn National Pick 4. It's on Thursday. This is the last week for it. It's a special Pick 4 linking Belmont's final two races with Penn National's first two races. This week will be the ninth race and the tenth race at Belmont with the first and second at Penn National. It's got a reduced takeout of 15%. It also is a 50 cent minimum wager. Please note that when you are wagering on this, it's separate from Belmont's regular card. And when wagering, please ask or look for the Belmont Penn National Pick 4. So we will kick it off with race nine at Belmont, which is the first leg. I will start off race nine from Belmont is a stakes race. It is the basket weave. It's a $100,000 race. I have four, nine, three, and six. I'm gonna take a look at two contenders here. I'm gonna look at number four, North Slope. There's a ton of pace in this race, and this is gonna be one of plenty that's gonna be gunning it from the opening bell. North Slope was in a grade three over a sloppy track, two starts back, and no reason why this horse, based on turf pedigree and past record, shouldn't be right there. But the horse that's gonna be closing from out of the clouds is number nine, Vinny Good Times, with Junior Alvarado. This horse is 16 lengths, 12 lengths out of it, more or less, and if this is going to be a wicked pace, which Chad, I think it's going to be. The nine Vinny Good Times is the one to beat, but on both my cheap and luxury tickets, I'm gonna go with the numbers three, four, nine, and six. Well, with this being the last week, let's, let's start it off great. I'm gonna punch you all for both my small ticket and the large ticket, but the two horses I do like in this race that stick out to me is, as Josh said, Vinny Good Times. He's going for his third in a row. His trainer, Patrick Quick, is winning at 19% at the meet. And one um, interesting fact is you usually don't re uh, improve off Todd Pletcher, but the horse has won two in a row and has uh, hit the board three out of three starts for um, Mr. Quick. With that being said, my other horse is number eight. Um, it's a Bill Mott horse. Mott is winning at 21% in stake races this year. Mott is also winning at 26% with first time with horses coming off another trainer. So my picks are eight and nine, but I did punch the all in both my tickets. All right, Chad's gonna turn this into a pick three and he will lead us off in leg two, which is race 10 at Belmont Park, seven furlongs on the Widener turf. Chad's donning the Hunter Orange today and you that. can proceed. That is for the Miami, University of Miami, the Hurricanes that is. Not the fall foliage outside. No, it is not. Okay, just making I'm sure. I'm gonna start off with number eight, Tokyo time. Just got beat in the neck in his last, back in March in a grade three event. Suge McGahee is winning at 22% with horses off over 60 days. He's also winning at 21% with horses in allowance races. Javier Castellano is back aboard. If this horse is ready, I think he's the horse to beat in this race. He's gonna be tough. Uh, a second choice of mine is Quay, the six horse. Just broke his maiden. Now I do know a lot of horses will bounce off the second coming off their maiden, but I do like this horse. He's been the money three of the. He's been wide in three of his last four races, 
and every time Turning Four Home has been no less than three or four lengths wide, sometimes even five. They paid a quarter million dollars for this horse. Just seems to be a little green. It looks like he's coming into his own. I think he's going to be there at the end. My last selection is number one, Kara's Match Point. They paid $200,000 for this horse at a yearling sale. Uh, Linda Rice is winning at 17% in her allowance. She's always got her horses tight. They're ready to roll. Your choices? Uh, I have the eight, six, and nine. So you covered the eight and the six. The nine is revenue, breaking from the far outside. This horse is another horse that likes to try to rally from out of the back of the pack, just like Vinny Good Times in the first leg of this pick four. Based on speed figures, I think the horse is going to need to do a bit faster, but when a horse is five wins, four places, and one show out of 18 starts, you can't leave this horse off the ticket. But like Chad said, number eight, Tokyo Time is strictly the one to beat. And number six, Quay, even though the percentage is a little low for the trainer, was a $250,000 purchase. So my selections are going to be eight, six, and nine in the second leg of the pick four. Penn National kicks off the third leg, which is race number one. They go a mile and 70 yards. My top selection in here is going to be number five, Heart of Nepal. 12 to one on John Bogar's morning line. The last two races were on the turf. You can throw those out. The horse is dropping in class for the first time. This horse is gonna have a lot of speed. There's a lot of other speed types in here, but I think this is gonna be a long shot must use. Number five is Heart of Nepal. Another horse I'm gonna take a look at is the number six horse, and that is Hurricane Bay with Louis. Belmonte. This one is going up in class a little bit, which is a bit of concern, but it has been the favorite three out of the last five times, and is two for 13 in victory lane. Chad, who do you like in the third leg? My top selection is going to be number three, Tory's Guy. I know it scared you coming out of the Jamie Ness barn. You never know what you're going to, but here's some staggering statistics with Ness. He's winning at 31% with horses running on the dirt this year. He's winning at 29% with his claimers this year. He's picking up the bug allowance. I think he's going to be there. I definitely like the three. But my second choice here is going to be a four to one shot, number four, Relentless Rush. Three for four in the last four races with three wins coming. Mike Rogers is winning at 19% here at Penn National this year. Rogers is always also winning at 17% with horses and claiming races. And I love the Kayla Albright as a board. She's winning at 15% this year. She's having a solid year. Just lost her bug. She's doing excellent. You know, I, I want to talk about the free, three just briefly. Tori's guy. The reason why I left the horse off my ticket was because I think the horse is going to regress off that last race, which came at the sloppy track down at Laurel. Outside of that, I think the numbers are a little slow. I love your angles. I just think the three might regress. And if he's the favorite, I'm going to just try to beat him. But I do like what Chad said. But does the horse like a rain-affected track? and not a fast track, which is what the weather forecast is predicting for uh, the pick four. So we'll see. Once again, reading between the lines, are you? Absolutely. Amazon.com. Fourth and final leg is race two. Penn National, mile and 16th. It's an allowance test. Chad, kick it off. I'm going to key. I have a key in my small ticket play. I'm going to use two horses in my large ticket. But my key horse here is going to be number two, long legged girl coming out of the nest barn once again. This horse, in his last seven starts since Ness has claimed this horse back in February, claimed it down at Gulfstream, since February, horse has run seven times, two wins, five seconds. Once again, picking up this bug allowance. I love the uh, less amount of weight there. Ness is winning at 26% this year overall. 26% he's also winning at with allowance horses. He's winning at 27% with horses off 60 or more days. Staggering statistics there. And 31% with horses coming off the dirt. That is my key play. My other horse that I'm going to use on the large ticket is going to be number one, Proud Vixen. Morning line 7-2, coming out of the Michael Trombetta barn. He's picking this horse up for the first time, first time out for him. And Michael Trombetta's winning at 18% with horses, first time out for him. I love your one, and I also like the 5 ET Indy. This horse really didn't do anything last time out at 30 cents to the dollar. That was a key race because the horse came back and win. That was I will if you win. Had a bit of a bobble at the start, so I'm going to give this horse a second chance, but I love the five. I like Chad's one and two. I'm going to toss in the three. Maria Remedio is a pretty good jockey coming here from Parks Racing as long as she retains the mount. The bump up in class is a bit of a concern, but this is going to be a long shot that I have to toss in, and I got a couple long shots in the back half that it could pay well if it pans out. But five, one, two, and three are my top four selections, and so while we wrap up our seventh and final Can I show. Can say one thing about the uh, five? Yes, you may. This horse was, was bought for 350000 back in 2010. 
they thought highly of this horse. Maybe the horse was a little green, maybe the horse got hurt somewhere along the line, but they do have a lot of money invested in this horse. So this horse could be coming in its own. So I do like your play there. Yeah, it was $150,000 breeding price too. And at least he's still in an allowance test. It's not like he's in a claiming ring. So, you know, kind of tread uh, a little lightly when you look between the five, because he's at four to one. He was bet last time and we'll see what happens. But I definitely like the five ET Indy. Absolutely. So let's look at our pick four tickets. Chad, you can go first. With my small ticket in the first leg, I'm gonna punch the all button, one through nine. The 10, number 10 is a main track only, so don't get confused with that. It's gonna be one through nine there. My second, uh, in the second race here, in this pick four, I'm gonna do the six and the eight. In the third leg, I'm gonna do the three and the four, and then I'm keying that nest horse here, number two. In my large ticket, once again, I'm gonna punch the all ticket, one through nine. But then I'm gonna give you four selections in the second leg. I like the one, the six, the eight, and the 10. In the third leg, I'm gonna use the three and the four. And then in the fourth leg, I'm gonna throw the one in there also with my key horse and the small ticket, so you're gonna have one and two. And that will give you a $72 play on that large ticket. Okay, my economy play in the first leg is three, four, six, and nine. In the second leg, which is race 10 from Belmont, I'm gonna go ahead and key the eight. In the third leg, which is race one, Penn National, I'm going four through seven. And in the final leg, it's one, two, and five. That's gonna cost you $24. On the expensive side of things, the luxury ticket, it's three, four, six, nine in the first leg. Second leg, I'm gonna go with a six, eight, and nine. The third leg, I'm going four, five, six, seven. And in the final leg for $96, it will cost you, I like numbers one, two, three, and five. So those are our tickets for the final edition of the Belmont Pen Pick Four. And we are hitting at 33% this year. We are two for six on our Belmont Penn National pick uh, fours. Well, we both hit it last week and it didn't pay anything, but we'll see what this week produces. Uh, there's supposed to be some rain in the forecast at Belmont Park today, so we'll see what the turf track looks like for Thursday. But on behalf of Chad Dale, I'm Josh Brown. Thank you very much for supporting the Belmont Penn pick four. Special thanks to JK, Craig, and Alyssa for all their hard work as well. And we will see you next time here Hope at Penn National. Soon. Good luck. Good luck.